since I'm a member of the monthly meeting team, and um, I'm happy to welcome you tonight. Um, and I'd like to introduce other members of the monthly meeting team as well. Christi Christina Cook is um, moving our slides around tonight. Um, Julia Isaacs is having some internet problems, so hopefully she'll be on. Uh, Marion Friedel is, I think, in Ireland, so she is out today. Susan Ossel is in, and we very recently um, had Lee Lanford join our team as well. So welcome, Lee. So before we move into the rest of the meeting, um, if Julia, are you on? Can you move into our land acknowledgement? Yes, I am on. Um, welcome, everyone. Let's take a moment or two to take two deep breaths together. Reflect on our ties to this land we live on. So I'm gonna breathe in and out and in and out. This is particularly helpful when we're having internet problems. Um, so I also wanna take this time to acknowledge that those of that I live um, in the land of the Ho Chunk people, the land that they call De Jok, um, which means land of four lakes, where they have lived since time immemorial. And this lovely picture, which I believe Kelly took, um, of peace lanterns floating on water, makes me want to share with you a Ho Chunk word because Ho-Chunk people are still living today and some are trying to preserve their language. The word is me. Um, and the Ho-Chunk believe that water is sacred. And I hope that we can take that stewardship towards water and land into our work together. Thank you, Julia. Um, so here's an overview of our meeting tonight. Um, we are, I'd like to extend a special uh, warm welcome to anyone who's here for the first time. I see a number of names that I don't recognize. So welcome to all of you. Um, please let us know in the chat if you're a newcomer and where you're from, what, what part of Wisconsin or not Wisconsin that you li live in. Um, I hope you feel welcome tonight. I want to publicly state that we want 350 Wisconsin's public meetings to be welcoming and supportive for all people, regardless of your background or identity. Tonight, the main item on our agenda is hearing from Kristen Clark about our sister C4 organization, 350 Wisconsin Action. I'll pass it over to Christina, who will introduce our speaker. All right. Thanks, Kelly. Um, so I'm happy to introduce Cl Kristen Clark as our speaker. Uh, for the monthly meeting this this month. And Kristen is currently the field director for 350 Wisconsin Action, um, I guess a sister organization to 350 Wisconsin. She brings her political experience from working as an organizer with the Democratic Party of Wisconsin in 2020 and on the Mandela Barnes for Wisconsin Senate campaign in 2022. Uh, she's a recent University of Wisconsin-Madison graduate with degrees in environmental studies and honors in political science. And post-graduation, Kristen is back in her hometown of Sparta, Wisconsin, and she's excited to be back home to flip uh, Wisconsin's third congressional district back to blue and make Derek Van Orden a one-time representative. So tonight, she'll be speaking on the work of 350 Wisconsin Action, an organization, an organization helping to organize people politically around climate. And we always include time for Q&A after the speaker, um, so you should, at any time, um, during Kristen's talk tonight, if a question comes to you, put it in the chat. Um, if you have a question that comes up after the talk, put that in the chat and I will pull questions from the chat and um, ask them to Kristen after she's finished presenting. So with that, I'm going to turn things over to Kristen Clark. Hi everyone, I'm so excited to be here with you all tonight. Thank you for taking time out of your busy week to join us and learn more about Project 2025's impact on climate and environment and our plan to make sure that never happens. 
Um, so I do have my email and information on the screen, but that will also be provided at the end. So don't stress about trying to write any of that down, but very excited to be with you all tonight. Um, I'm ready for the next slide. So I wanted to start off talking about what is Project 2025 and kind of establish a baseline. It may be something you've heard about, friends and family talk about, maybe you've heard a couple times in the news, um, maybe you've done some research into it, or maybe it's still kind of a mystery to you. So I wanted to kind of you know, start with this baseline understanding that Project 2025 is a policy agenda that was primarily authored by the Heritage Foundation, which is a conservative right-wing um, organization. And it is a plan to reshape the U.S. federal government in alignment, in alignment with conservative and right-wing policies. The objective is to consolidate executive and judicial power to an extent, uh, reclassify federal civil service workers as political appointees. So that means your everyday federal employees that their work has nothing to do with political values, conservative, liberal, Republican, Democrat. They're just, they're just doing their job, working for a paycheck. They're trying to reclassify thousands of those jobs to political appointees so they can be fired and reappointed with um, conservative leaning folks. And it also is to infuse the government with more conservative Christian values that really blur the line between the separation of church and state. Uh, the implication is to promote a unitary executive theory, which emphasizes the president's control over the executive branch, as well as expanding the powers of the executive branch. Um, so go ahead and next slide. Thank you very much. So as I mentioned, the leading organization is the Heritage Foundation. And I wanted to note, because I know the, the title promised big oil, so the Heritage Foundation has received almost a million dollars from ExxonMobil since 1998, and that is just one fossil fuel company. There are many more fossil fuel companies that also donate very significantly to the Heritage Foundation, as well as the other um, organizations listed um, in the supporting groups that I have bullet pointed on the screen. And so again, it's to just demonstrate that these fossil fuel companies invest into these conservative groups to set forth these policies that when they elect their politicians, which we are going to stop this November, but if they were to elect these politicians, that fossil fuel companies are calling the shots. Um, the other thing to note with the key individuals is you may have heard Trump say he doesn't know anything about Project 2025, he doesn't like Project 2025, yada, yada, yada. It's all lies. If I was here in an unprofessional capacity, I might use a two-letter acronym to um, for it, but basically all of his previous staff, you know, people who are very high up in his administration, in his campaigns, in his political orbit, are the primary authors of Project 2025. And it's not like these people are in his past. These are people that are continuing to work with him in some capacity or will be major players if he were to be elected again. But obviously we're going to stop that. So he's not elected again. But I just want to point out that even though Trump is trying to put distance in between himself and Project 2025, there really isn't any distance there. Um, so next slide, please. So the broader implications of Project 2025 really touch all aspects of life, all aspects of American life. So everything from centralizing law enforcement to have increased federal control over local authorities, federalize, militarize um, local police, undermine their autonomy, as well as rolling back civil rights protections, as we saw in the previous Trump administration, it would be that even further, because again, they have this exact blueprint that they have typed up on how to most effectively roll back civil rights. 
Um, and so obviously that is a major threat. Additionally, um, we saw horrors in the 2016 Trump administration when it came to immigration policy. They have, again, um, more solidified plans to continue to execute um, those very harsh and dehumanizing policies. Um, additionally, health care and reproductive rights. Um, it was a conservative Supreme Court with judges appointed by President Trump that have dismantled um, Roe v. Wade and women's reproductive health care freedoms, as well as that Supreme Court is the one who rolled back EPA's power to enforce things like clean air and clean water and all of the other environmental regulations um, that we need for a healthy community. Um, so again, kind of decreasing the power of any organization they don't like, um, which again goes into the judicial influence. Also, one quick point out that judicial influence isn't just for the Supreme Court. There's many, many federal courts that make very important decisions every day that are appointed by presidents, but they're just not like the Supreme Court, but still um, have a lot of effect all over the country. Next slide, please. So additionally, all of this is going to have an additionally adverse effect on marginalized community, especially when we think about climate justice and the environmental impacts of Project 2025. So when we talk about environmental regulation rollbacks that are going to affect public health, they're going to affect marginalized communities first and disproportionately more. So you know, losing regulation on clean water, clean air, clean soil, all of that is going to have very adverse effects on public health. It's also going, Project 25 is going to have adverse effects on um, economic communities as far as support and relief and programs and things that help our communities. A lot of those policies and funding would go away. We have already you know, talked about the civil rights piece of it, as well as um, threats to reproductive rights, um, you know, also threats to things like social security and Medicaid and Medicare funding. And again, things that keep us healthy and safe and our communities healthy and safe are all under attack under Project 2025. Um, next slide, please. So, you know, obviously first and foremost, 350 Wisconsin, 350 Wisconsin Action, we're a climate organization. And so I um, wanted to talk about the specific environmental effects as well. As I have started to talk about already, it would severely reduce the um, power of the EPA to um, be able to regulate our things that we need to have regulated, like our clean air, water, um, emissions, you know, any health and safety, all of that good stuff. And due to those rollbacks and regulations, we're gonna have an increase in greenhouse gas emissions, um, especially because Project 2025 explicitly calls for the removal of the greenhouse gas reporting program. So, you know, they, they say, you know, but all the emissions in the atmosphere, we don't need to know about it. We don't care, you know, just, Drill, drill, baby, drill is basically what their policy is when it comes to energy. Um, and that perfectly transitions into the next um, bullet point of increased fracking, drilling, repeal of environmental spending bills. So again, that funding for renewable energy, incentives for communities to invest in renewable energy, all of that programs would disappear as well as our withdrawal from the Paris Climate Agreement. Um, so overall, this would be very dis disastrous. And as you know, many folks on this call know, we already have a very, very small window to get a lot of environmental work done. Um, and so, you know, basically having four years of these types of environmental policies would be absolutely disastrous for on the future of, you know, fighting the climate crisis. Um, next slide, please. 
So one more kind of slide going into the specifics of the effects and the specific on or effects on specific ecosystems. So large scale deforestation would result in a loss of biodiversity. There would be habit, habitat fragmentation. And, you know, with all of the additional pollution that I've kind of talked about already in the presentation, it would continue to affect you know, biodiversity for ecosystems as well as human health. And all of this would, you know, significantly accelerate climate change. Additionally, with um, not just like additional emissions into atmosphere, but it would also very drastically reduce the carbon sinks that we have, um, you know, in America, our forests, our bogs and marshes, all of our ecosystems that pull carbon out of the atmosphere and, you know, take it back into the earth and, you know, complete the whole carbon cycle um, that I, my professors would be proud of remembering about. Um, basically, it would get rid of those carbon sinks. So not only would we be putting more carbon into the atmosphere, we would also be you know, losing our ability to take it back out of the atmosphere. Um, and then as well with marine life, there would be coral bleaching and um, die-offs due to the ocean warming and the rising sea levels. So uh, next slide, please. So obviously that was all very bleak, very scary. And so one thing we're going to do to prevent that from happening is we're going to vote. And so this slide is to check your voter registration. You can scan the QR code. You can go to vote.org. I'm also putting the link in the chat right now, but it's literally just vote.org. And I'm going to stop talking for a minute and let everyone check their voter registration. Um, even if you like voted in the August election and you know you're good, it never hurts to double check and make sure everything's all set. So I will pause for just a moment as folks do that. Okay, feel free to um, continue checking your voter registration. Um, you know, leave the tab open or continue to do it um, while I keep talking. So again, I just laid out a very scary future, um, but there's the other side of that, right, is on the other end of a scary future, there's also a huge opportunity this November to not only stop that, you know, a lot of this electoral work, yes, it's about stopping the other guys, but it's also about what are our vision for our communities and for our country and what are our values that we want to see implemented. And so we have a huge opportunity here in Wisconsin to do that this year. So first and foremost, we have new maps, finally, yay. And so um, many of you probably know Wisconsin had very, very, very gerrymandered maps um, for a very long time, most of my life. Um, and because of grassroots organizing, year in and year out, we were able to elect a liberal state Supreme Court majority. Uh -oh. And because of that majority, they were able to pass new maps for us this past spring. The maps were went into effect. 
And so with these new maps, we finally have a shot at flipping the Wisconsin State Assembly, which has been under heavy Republican control for a long time. And so by having control of the Wisconsin State Assembly, we would have the governor and we would have the state assembly. So we would have two thirds. And basically we would be able to not only prevent and stop crazy Republican agendas, they get, they get a lot of big ideas down in there in Madison, um, those um, Republicans, they have a creative imagination of things they would like to do with the state. And so not only can we stop those ideas, but we can start to implement our own policies. We can start to implement our progressive values for um, safe and healthy communities. So kind of looking out from Wisconsin up to the federal level, we have the opportunity to elect our first woman president. I It's kind of crazy to me. I live in a world where we haven't had a woman president yet, but I sure look forward to hopefully having kids someday and telling them about how I got to watch the first woman president be elected. Um, and not only is she, you know, great and historic in that way, but she's also committed to climate action and to equality and looks for um, groups to partner with to help lead those values and policies as well. Additionally, we want to reelect Senator Tammy Baldwin and defeat Representative Derek Van Orden. Um, defeating Derek Van Orden means electing Rebecca Cook to Wisconsin's third congressional for the U.S. House of Representatives. Representative Van Orden is, if you haven't heard of him, he is um, not a Greek guy. I'll, I'll put it like that. He, um, you know, likes to get mad and yell at unpaid interns on more than one occasion. And he's the only Wisconsin representative on the House Agriculture Committee. And so he has significant impact over things like the Farm Bill, which are things that, you know, have very strong influence on, you know, our here in Wisconsin, and we need someone with a better voice and someone aligned with our values to serve on that committee and represent Wisconsin for the Farm Bill. Um, so we're going to defeat him, and then when we do all this, we're going to pass bold climate legislation. So how we're going to do that. Next slide, please. So we're going to do, these are our main four things we're going to do. We're going to do deep canvassing. Deep canvassing is not just knocking on someone's door and saying, hey, it's election time. Do you have a plan to vote? It's knocking on someone's door, ringing their phone, and having a long personal conversation with them about their values, about their concerns, what's on their mind, and really having that personal touch. And it's proven to be much more effective at actually turning out the vote for the candidates you support. And it leaves people feeling less like we just show up, yell at them to vote, and then disappear for four years. It's much better at building connection um, in that way. We're also doing relational organizing. Again, proven to be very effective because relational organizing is texting, calling, talking with your friends and family. We have an opportunity to be paid to text your friends and family. It's easy, it's simple, it's very effective. And I have um, the next slide as a QR code to scan to get signed up for that. Um, additionally, here in Wisconsin, we have a lot of UW campuses spread out and youth voters can influence and significantly sway the election especially in Wisconsin's third congressional district. Again, we gotta get rid of Derek Grant Orden. So we are out on campuses, talking to students, getting them registered to vote, making sure they have everything they need to vote. And then we're also doing traditional voter outreach. I know I'm very excited about deep canvassing. I'm very excited about relational organizing, but it's called traditional canvassing because it works. It's tried and true, knocking on doors, making phone calls, writing postcards, it's the bread and butter of campaigns. Um, next slide, please. So this is the slide I was talked about, is our opportunity to be paid to text friends and family. Go ahead and scan the QR code. I will also drop 
the link in the chat. Um, but you can get paid up to $50 five times for a total of $250 to text your friends and family about the election. It's really that simple. We have, you know, there's training provided, there's support provided, there's resources. Um, you know, if you have questions, comments, concerns, I can take those later and also, um, you know, outside of this meeting as well. Um, oh, I think my link did not go where I wanted it to. Okay, there we go. There's the link to everyone and I will jump to the next slide. More ways to help and get involved. You can join our weekly Tuesday phone banks every Tuesday, now through Election Day Tuesday. We are calling voters and we're checking in with them. We're seeing how they're feeling. We're seeing what way they're leaning, what issues they care about, and seeing if they have a plan to vote. You can make calls any day of the week. We have a link that you can log in, make calls any day or time you would like. If you want to make calls every day now through election, you can. The Tuesdays, 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. is when we will, as staff, will be in the Zoom room to answer questions, provide a little training, and be there to help you out. If you would like help and guidance and you're not available Tuesdays, 5 to 6 p.m., I will drop, um, I have a whole Google Doc that I will also be dropping with all these opportunities, um, and you can email us and we can more than happy to help you outside of Tuesdays, five to six. Um, Madison door knocking. We had our first um, Madison deep canvassing shift this Sunday. Thank you to everyone who participated in that. Nikki told me it was very successful and that it gave folks, the people who participated, the volunteers who participated, they left feeling very like good and that was easier than they thought and they're excited to do more. We're doing more. Next Thursday, um, I'm realizing I forgot the next Thursday part of it on this slide. Next Thursday, the 19th, 5.30 to 6.30 will also be on the Google Doc that I will link to here in one second. And then paid UW campus fellowships. If you know a college student at a UW campus, if you are a student at a UW campus, we would love to have you join our paid fellowship program. There's more information on that tiny URL. Also can access it by emailing us. And um, yes, next slide. Also, we're flipping, we're getting rid of Derek, Derek Van Norden. I know I've said it five times, but it's very important and we're gonna do it. To help do that, we're having field trips from Madison up to Western Wisconsin on these dates. Um, you can scan the QR code to sign up. Again, it will also be linked in the Google Doc. Um, come join us, take a field trip with some of your 350 Wisconsin friends and help us knock some doors in Western Wisconsin and these cities on these dates. Um, I know I'm running a little bit close on time, which is why I'm kind of speeding through this, but I want to say thank you all for having me and um, here is this Google Doc I keep alluding to that has all of those opportunities I just discussed. They're all laid out on that Google Doc that I just put in the chat. And I would love to take your questions. All right. Thank you, Kristen. Thanks for laying out kind of what we're up against and also all the, all the ways we can take action and all the things we can do um, to move towards the, the future we, we want. So um, I'll keep an eye on the chat if there's any questions for Kristen about her presentation or about um, all the different ways that she outlined to participate. Um, if you wait a minute for folks to digest and, and share. We have a comment that deep canvassing was a great experience. So an endorsement from the from the audience. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Also, it's in the Google Doc, but I didn't, I forgot to throw on this slide. We also have postcards that are really cool that like, um, so if, you know, you're just in person talking to people, phone banking is not your thing, we get it. Um, and you still want help, we do have postcards available. So just reach out to us and we can get you set up writing some of those. I so see Kelly. Yeah, we have a question from Kelly. Go ahead, Kristen. Yeah, Kelly asked, how do you get to the deeper conversations with deep canvassing? Are people willing to talk in depth? I think that you just start with the prompt. And I think most times, you know, you, you, you just start with that broad question of like, how likely are you to vote? You know, what is affecting that decision? And in my experience, people are either willing to talk with you or they're not. And I think sometimes field organizing, doing this volunteer work can be really difficult because we can take things, you know, it's not fun getting hung up on or the door closed in our face. But when you think about Wisconsin elections, we're a 1% swing state. All of our elections usually come down to like 19,000 votes, 1%. If you think about your work as a volunteer, you're, you're trying to make a 1% difference. You have 100 conversations. You just, you can have 99 bad conversations. All you need is one conversation where you're connecting with a voter, providing them that information, and maybe, you know, reminding them the importance of their vote and the impact their vote can have. Wisconsin elections come down to one to two votes per ward. And so, you know, we really, the vote does matter. And so I think deep canvassing, you know, not everyone, to answer your question, Kelly, not everyone is going to be willing to have that deep level conversation with you. And that's okay, because you only need to be making that 1% difference to, you know, fight off Project 2025. All right, lots so, more questions in the chat about prerequisites, times and dates. Yes. We so there is a to. recorded training. I believe Nikki will be providing some more live Zoom trainings for deep canvassing as well. Um, shout out to Nikki Darga. Many of you probably know her. She is our deep canvassing guru. Um, and so we will be having more training. But if you wanted to like jump in right away, you're super motivated. Um, and, you know, we could email you the link to the train or the link to the record training is in that Google Doc up in the chat. So you could watch it tonight if you're that motivated. Um, but also Nikki will be providing more Zoom trainings. And then we don't have the exact location in Madison picked for the Thursday 19th training, um, but it will be in the larger Madison area. Um, we're going to take a look at where we can make the most impact. And um, to be honest, we just haven't had, I haven't had the time in my schedule to make that assessment yet and pull the turf that will be um, within, you know, the larger Madison area. Um, yes, weekend deep canvas opportunities in Madison, um, they're coming. Um, this one we did on Sunday was just the first. We're looking to really get some going. Um, if anyone is interested in kind of being a captain where I provide you all the information and resources you need, but you could kind of like, you know, watch it, it would sure help um, poor Nikki's um, work time and schedule. Um, so open to someone who's really interested and can captain, I would provide everything you need. You just got to show up and, um, you know, smile at folks, basically, uh, I would make it that easy for you. But yes, in general, even without that, we will have more weekend opportunities. Great. All right. Any final questions for Kristen before we switch over into announcements. Okay, we'll pause here. But I think Kristen, you'll be hanging around for the breakouts after at the end of the meeting, right? Yes. So you can definitely talk more to Kristen. Then you can contact Nikki, you can watch the recorded training. 
and and get involved. So, and maybe in the breakout, some people who are on the deep canvassing this weekend could share a little bit about how it went if there's time and people are are up for that. Um, so with that, I will turn things back over to Kelly. Thank you, Kristen. That was very helpful. Um, and I think people will have a lot to um, to want to um, learn about in doing that. Sorry. Um, okay, so um, now it's time for a few announcements. So we will um, take a few minutes to um, have announcements from some of our teams and our staff. So we're going to start out with um, Diane Brakash, um, who is a co-chair of the Art Collective. So Diane, take it away. Hey. Thank you. So we, uh, the Art Collective, <clears throat> which means everybody, because you're all always welcome to participate in everything we do, has a very busy month for September. We're involved in three parades, um, as well as some more uh, farmer's market actions. And if you didn't know our, our the farmer's market actions we keep doing, you probably were wondering why are they doing this gates of hell thing all the time, every month? It's focused, it's totally about the election, about climate change and the election. So our next one is uh, this Saturday, September 14th at 10 a.m. Um, there'll be, uh, I think, links in the chat to sign up for that. But we, the more people we have, the more signs, the more, um, the more information we can give, the more leafleting. So, uh, and it's it's really a it's really a fun one. So we would we would value your support at that. And then, uh, well, three fifty Wisconsin is going to be tabling at the Willie Street Fair on September twenty first and twenty second, and we want to put out a special invitation to join us for the parade, the Willie Street Parade on Sunday, the 22nd at 11 a.m. If you've never attended the Willie Street Parade, it's it's quite a Madison tradition and it's just this massive um, manifestation of joy and life. And it's a great thing for us to participate in because number one, there are lots and lots of people there who are potential volunteers or donors. We can show them that we're here, we're doing this work, um, we're really cool, they should join us, et cetera. Uh, and it's also just, it's fun. And I think we can all really use that. This is such a busy, busy time. <laughs> we're all working so hard when, with our different teams and the elections and stress is rising. So there's a lot to be said for taking some time to be together, to decompress and just, just celebrate. And the Willie Street Parade is all about that. So there is truly a role for everyone. You don't have to dance. You don't have to do any anything that you don't want to do. But we have lots of hats and signs. And um, the more we have, the more we can communicate what 350 Wisconsin is about. So please, please um, check that out and sign up to come and join us. And it's just a lot, a lot of fun. Thank you. Thanks, Diane. So the next announcement is from the Renewable Land Relations team. Um, uh, the Savannah Institute is one of our partners. They are a organization that does a lot of research, has demonstration farms and outreach um, about um, sustainable agriculture and specifically a lot of perennial um, farming. And so they are having both an open house and a um, essentially a conference, um, the perennial farm gathering in early October. The open house, um, you don't have to be signed up for the conference to do the open house. It's gonna be um, on Saturday afternoon, October 5th from one to five. And there's actually gonna be shuttles from um, Madison if you're interested in it, if you go, you can go to the website there, the savannahinstitute.org, and it's in the chat and get more information about that, as well as the conference, which will be October 6th through the 8th and has lots of interesting information um, about um, mostly for 
um, people who are professional um, uh, agriculturists, uh, but also um, I found as an urban gardener, I found a lot of interest in there too. So um, check it out if you're interested. Hey, next, um, Maddie Loeffler is going to talk to us about what's happening with We Energies. And Maddie is our office administrator. All righty, hello everyone. Um, uh, so the Public Service Commission or PSC of Wisconsin is currently considering a proposal from We Energies, uh, primarily serving uh, Southeast Wisconsin um, in the Milwaukee area, uh, a proposal from We Energies to raise customer rates for the third time in the past three years uh, by nearly 20% by 2026. Uh, so this proposal comes at a time when We Energies ratepayers are increasingly unable to afford uh, their energy bills. And even though the PSC ordered WEC Energy Group, uh, we Energy's parent company to propose a new low income assistance program. It's uh, in the next rate case. Uh, movement on that has stagnated and there's no low income assistance program to be found in the new proposal. Uh, so many We Energy's customers continue to struggle with energy burden with no end in sight. And the kicker, uh, we Energies doesn't actually need more money to operate. The increase would allow WEC Energy Group to continue its 21-year streak of higher and higher returns for its wealthy shareholders. So this is pretty terrible, but we have an opportunity to stop it. The PSC's uh, public comment period is open until October, to October 7th. Uh, and I'll be sharing our new blog post in the chat, which contains a lot more detail on the case and talking points and a sample comment. I'll also be sharing a link to the recording of our monthly meeting from a year ago. Um, that one is called uh, Climate Justice and Energy Burden. Uh, it's a panel. Um, and so if you'd like to learn more uh, and hear directly from Kiva, who uh, is working with communities affected by the energy's frequent increases, uh, I would recommend uh, tuning into that. Okay, thank you, Maddie. It looks like you'll also be sending out an email probably with a link in it as well in a couple of days. Yes, that should be coming your way on Wednesday. Great, thank you. Okay, next, Brittany Reamer, our fossil fuel organizer, has two different announcements. Thanks, Kelly. Hi, everyone. Um, I am not camera ready this evening, so I'm going to save you the uh, the torture of looking at me tonight. Um, uh, so the first announcement I have is about extreme weather events. So I don't know if anybody saw, but last month, NOAA uh, came out with a statement predicting that 2024 is likely to be the hottest year on record. So on top of, you know, the, the um, deaths that we see from heat, uh, other things like tornadoes and wildfires, uh, something else that is happening is an abnormally active Atlantic hurricane season. So the Atlantic Ocean is a lot hotter than it usually is. Um, and because of this, we've actually seen the earliest Category 5 storm on record in Hurricane Barrel. Uh, but we know that average people aren't feeling this extreme weather. Uh, 70 years ago, the U.S. began naming hurricanes alphabetically after women, and then men's names started to be included in 1978. So big polluters burning fossil fuels are to blame for these more intense, dangerous, and damaging storms, uh, not, not people like Beryl. So it's time for transparency. It's time for us to start naming these extreme storms and extreme hurricanes after the big polluters responsible. So I'm gonna put a link in the chat for you all for a uh, petition that we have going um, that y'all can sign if you haven't already. Uh, and sorry, lost my page there. Uh, <laughs> and you can add your name to that petition if you haven't already, uh, just demanding that the um, 
you know, the, that we start naming names, right? And it's time for transparency and uh, naming these um, storms after the, the polluters who are responsible. Sorry, ready for the next slide. Okay, and although that was, um, you know, a little bit of bad news there, as far as the hottest year on record, I do have some really, really amazing news. Um, another type of heat that's turning up here. So the opposition to line five is gaining momentum. We saw, I don't know if anybody can believe this. I can't believe it, even though I know it's true. We saw over 150,000 public comments being submitted to the U.S. Army Corps in opposition to the Line 5 reroute in northern Wisconsin. 150,000. It actually, the actual count was like a, higher than that. It was probably closer to 170, um, but but uh, we're going with the 150. So I know that there was a lot of energy put into this by everybody here and especially our Tar Sands team. So I just want to take a second to really shout out the Tar Sands team for, for getting this out there, all of the great organizing that everybody did. Um, you know, and, and we have seen this grow, uh, not just here in Wisconsin, but across the United States and, and cross border into Canada. I'm going to share an article that was released um, in the chat for you all from w WPR. And there's one uh, paragraph in here that I just want to highlight, and I'm going to put that in the chat too. Um, so you can see there, uh, last week, more than 150,000 people submitted comments to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers in opposition to the project, to the project compared to more than 14,000 people who signed a petition in favor of the Line 5 reroute. So we have the numbers. Um, we can do this. The final EIS uh, from the DNR was actually released on Friday. So more to come on that as soon as we have the information and we have time to go over the nearly 900 page document that they released. So, all right, uh, pat yourselves on the back. This was absolutely amazing work. Thanks, Brittany. That was really, um, that's good news. Uh, next up is Stephanie Robinson, who is our co-executive director and um, also um, works on our fundraising. So um, Stephanie. Uh, thank you. Hi, everyone. It's so great to see you all here tonight. Um, so much great work going on at 350 Wisconsin and 350 Wisconsin Action. I hope you're feeling inspired um, to get involved because we really need you. Um, so I'm going to ask everyone here to um, mark the date on your calendar of December 3rd. Because yes, there is going to be life after the election. And we're looking forward to celebrating with all of you at our annual Together for the Climate celebration on December 3rd. This is a really fun event where we come together as a community uh, to recognize our volunteers and um, look back at the year and celebrate our many accomplishments. There's food, there's always a creative or surprising contribution from the art collective and the event is free to attend. So we look forward to seeing you all there in December. Uh, this event occurs on Giving Tuesday, and um, it is the most one of the most important fundraising dates of the year for 350 Wisconsin, where we raise a significant portion of our budget to support our work, our teams, and our campaigns um, in 2025. And the event also includes an incredible silent auction, both in person and online, with many contributions from local businesses around the, and businesses all around the state, actually, um, and also wonderful contributions from talented 350 Wisconsin members, our crafters, artists, and folks with um, particular expertise um, that they share with us through um, experiential items. So we just want to get you thinking about that now. And if you've done it before or you would like to contribute something to the auction, um, we would like you to let us know. Um, there's plenty of time to think about it, but I'm gonna go ahead and put the form in the chat for you. Um, and um, we look forward to seeing you and hopefully celebrating a wonderful outcome um, of the election. Thanks to all of our your great work. So thank Thanks, you. Stephanie. 
Um, I'd like to point out that there's a lot of um, interesting things going, getting put into the chat. So um, you may want to take a look at that before you close out tonight and, and save some of those uh, links that are in the chat. Okay, next up is um, you may want to um, put the next two monthly meetings on your calendar. Both the October and November meetings will be on Zoom starting at 7 p.m. So please note that the November meeting will be on the 11th so that we aren't having the meeting the night before the elections. We think people are gonna be kind of busy that night. So the October meeting will feature staff from Public Health Madison in Dane County discussing air quality and extreme heat in Dane County and some of the plans for, um, for helping people deal with, with those emergencies when they come up. The November meeting will feature staff from the Wisconsin's Office of Sustainability and Clean Energy and they're going to discuss the plans for the state's comprehensive climate action plan. And it's still being developed. And so they are seeking our input for the plan. So if you want to have some input on that plan, come to the November meeting. And please note that there will not be a monthly meeting in December because um, it would be the day right before Giving Tuesday. And we'll be seeing each other on Giving Tuesday. So we'll be doing that instead in December. Okay. Now, um, thank you. And now we are pretty much done with the meeting, so we can stop the recording. And we welcome any newcomers that to join any that that might.